Do you hate brush marks as much as I do? Today I'm sharing a brush and roll paint finish that eliminates brush marks and gives a near spray on finish. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. So if you hate ugly brush marks on your paint projects, today I'm sharing a brush and roll paint technique that helps eliminate those ugly brush strokes. And I've been seeing a lot of professional painters using this method here on YouTube and even one of Nick's trades, uh, we call him Tommy the Painter, <laughs> offers this brush and roll paint technique when working on high-end doors and cabinets. Um, if you missed last week's post or a YouTube video, it's the exact same technique I use to paint my French black doors. And I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on using this brush and roll off method on furniture on this thrifted dresser that I found in the thrift store. And then I'm going to let you decide what you think of this finish by sharing some close-up pics with you. So here's the MCM dresser I started with. I picked it up from a restore for $40 and just look at that face, right? I mean, <laughs> there's no way I could have just left it there. The laminate top had some wear and tear and there was some chips and gouges that needed repairing on this dresser, but otherwise it was in great shape. I started by giving it a really good cleaning and then removing all the hardware. Off with the eyes and off with the mouth. <laughs> and then I took off the panels that were actually on the bottom drawer as well. If any of you guys have any ideas how to salvage and repurpose these, I'd love to hear in the comments down below. Once all the hardware was off, rather than sand this entire dresser down, I used a bonding primer called Slick Stick. And Slick Stick is great. There's no sanding required. It works really well to create adhesion to your paint if you're working with laminate, uh, glass, tile, plastic, anything that has a very slick surface. I like pouring it onto a plate and applying it with a four inch foam roller. As you can see, I'm applying the slick stick onto the drawers as well, but you may notice that I have not filled the hardware holes and or uh, the gouge at the bottom of this drawer. And the reason why I like doing this this way better than filling and then priming is because once I prime I get to see every little detail that does need filling whereas if I was to fill first sometimes I miss a lot and then I still have to fill and then reprime. I always encourage you to find what works for you. So this may not be the way you prefer to do it. In my case, it often saves me a step. So once I had my bonding primer on and all the hardware holes and gouges were filled and dried, I took my sander and sanded everything down smooth. While I was in my sanding room, I decided to sand the existing finish off the four legs and off the wood runners on the front of the dresser. Once I had everything sanded exactly the way I wanted and everything was smooth and filled, it was time to prime. And the reason being uh, is because I knew, I actually used the Gorilla Epoxy Stick and some wood fill to fill in everything. And if I was to use Slick Stick again, it would beat through. So I needed something a little more heavy duty to cut back the stain. So I used a BIN or bin shellac base primer. Plus I was running out of time and this 
primer works very fast. It dries within a matter of a half hour and then you can go ahead and start painting. For a smooth finish on my primer, uh, again, I used my four inch foam roller to apply it. And I have a full tutorial on how to use BIN or Bin Shellac Base Primer, which I'll add in the card cards above and in the description down below under the show more. Once it was all primed and dry, it was time to pick a color. And I had quite a few to choose from, from the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint line. Uh, I knew I did wanna use this paint, and I ended up going with this blue, and it's called Cape Current. And I've been asked before, why do you prime if you're using Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint that has a built-in primer and a built-in top coat? And I have two answers. One, often I don't know what color or what type of paint I'm going to use when I start a project. So I'm just in the habit of priming right away. Two, as in this case, it's a timing issue. Uh, for the built-in primer to work beautifully, what you do is you lay your paint, your silk all-in-one mineral paint down, and you wait overnight, and then you apply your second coat. And that way, the primer will stop any bleed through or any stains that you have. However, I'm usually on a very tight schedule because I put out a lot of furniture, plus I have the blog and the YouTube channel, etc. So speed is an issue for me. With the Bin Shellac Base Primer, it's throw it on, and then wait half an hour and it's ready to paint. However, I still use and love the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint because it saves me so much time with the built-in top coat. So for me, it's a time issue. So now for the fun part. Here comes the fun painting part. So I use this 2.5 flat edge synthetic brush to apply the silk paint to the drawer. And as you can see here, I am hitting the sides of the drawers on an angle. And this provides a really, really clean line on the sides of your drawers. You won't end up with any drips on the lip and it covers beautifully. Uh, and also if you're using painter's tape, don't bother. Just, <laughs> just paint your drawers on an angle like this off the side and you'll see that you'll get a nice clean look every time. Uh, I applied a nice layer of paint. I mean, it wasn't overly thick, but it's not a thin layer either. It's a generous layer of paint. I painted the lips of the drawers on the side and the top. And while the paint was still fresh and wet, I took this four inch foam roller and I rolled over all the brush marks. As you can see, it eliminates all the marks all together. And then I went ahead and I rolled the lips of the, of the drawer as well. I went ahead and repeated the process on all the rest of the drawers. And to share one more time, here I am applying the paint to the drawer using the brush and I'm angling to the edges so I don't make a mess on the edges. This will give you a nice, crisp, clean line. So again, I'm adding a fair amount of paint. It's, it's not too thick, but it's definitely not a thin paint. It's a generous layer of paint. Then I go ahead and I do the lips of the drawers. So I do the top and the two sides with the brush. And after I've done the sides, I uh, take the four inch foam roller. And again, you don't load the roller with any paint. The paint that you see on this roller is the paint that's actually coming off these drawers. So I take the four inch roller and I roll away all the brush strokes that the paint brush has made. Now you'll see that there's a tiny little bit of texture um, in the paint and as it dries, it will actually lay more evenly. 
Now, wait till you see to the end of the video what this finish looks like dry. I'm very curious of your thoughts. But the reason why you don't just go ahead and load the roller with paint and just use a roller on its own is because once that roller is loaded fully with paint, you're going to end up with more air bubbles in the application, more air bubbles and more orange peel finish. So you'll end up with a lot more texture than doing it this way with a drier brush. I also wanted to add that my first time I rolled over and get rid of all the brush strokes is I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on it, a normal amount of pressure uh, rolling. But if you notice that you have some marks on it from the roller, just go over it very, very lightly one more time as you see me doing here. After I finished painting the drawers and the body of the dresser, I wanted to clean things up. And here's a little quick tip for you. Uh, inevitably, I try to be super neat while I'm painting and not get any paint onto the drawer guides or the insides of the dresser, etc. But a little always does end up on drawer guides, etc. Whether it's a little bit of primer, a little bit of paint, etc. So to keep things really professional looking, I just sand it off. I don't worry about the paint getting on the areas that it's not wanted so much. If I can go in with a sander and just sand off the paint so it looks like a nice, crisp, clean, professional line, I find that's the best and easiest way to keep the in sides of a dresser looking really neat and professional looking. I also did the same for the two pieces of wood running the length of the dresser that I was going to stain in the natural stain color. And again, this gave it a really, really crisp, clean line for me to go in and stain. Once uh, everything was sanded perfectly. I ended up using this Voodoo, Voodoo water-based stain in Eau Naturelle. And quite honestly, it didn't make that much of a difference of the color of the wood, which is was exactly what I was looking for. It just took out a little bit of the yellow-orange tone and gave it a really clean, natural look. And this Stain is very easy to use. As I mentioned, it's water-based. And for this application, I just used a blue shop towel and I applied it onto the bare wood legs and also the two strips of bare wood on the front of the dresser. Now I left the top for last because it had some scratches and imperfections in it. So I had to do wood fill a couple of times and then I primed it a few times. And while it was drying, I was painting the body of the drawers. And because the top is such a large surface, I actually worked in sections to do this brush and roll paint method on it. So here I'm applying it to the top of the dresser. However, again, I'm working in sections. So I'm adding on a good amount of paint using my brush and I'm applying it on probably maybe about six inches worth because my roller is a four inch roller and I want to make sure that I'm rolling it while the paint is still very wet and fresh. So here I am going over it with the foam roller just to even out all those brush marks. Then I go ahead and I grab my brush, paintbrush again. I overlap slightly, ever so slightly, and I apply about another six inches worth of paint, fresh paint, next to what I just rolled out. Then grabbing the roller, I feather them in together and I roll out all the brush marks again. I keep working in sections until I'm entirely finished. Then I let it dry and I gave it a really good sanding in between coats. I used a 320 sandpaper along with a block and I just sanded it until it was super, super smooth. I 
I cleaned all the dust with a tack cloth and then I went in and did the exact same process once again for my second coat, working in sections, applying it with the paintbrush and then rolling it with the foam roller. And here's what it looks like still wet. This has just been rolled. This is the second coat. And here's a magnifying close up of what the paint looks like when it's all wet. And again, this is very, very magnified with the camera. I'm pointing here at the wet part and you can see the texture. But if you move to the other side of the dresser, this is what it starts looking like when it's drying. This part of the dresser is half dried, half wet. And you can see how much more it evens out once it starts to dry. And again, this is a very magnified look. Uh, when you're standing back from the dresser, this, in my opinion, it looks like a sprayed finish if you're standing back from the dresser. When you're looking at a very magnified close look up at the dresser, you can see that there's a slight texture in the paint. So to finish this dresser off, I measured for the hardware holes and drilled the holes and attached the new hardware, which is this brushed brass uh, that I get off of Amazon. And when you put two of them together, they complete a circle. I use this look on my drop cloth dresser, which I'll include in the description down below if you wanna go take a look. And this hardware is simply gorgeous. And as promised, here's a close up look of the finish once it's dried. I'm very curious to know what you think of this finish and if you would give this finish a try. So here's the before and here's the after. And I have to say, I love the way this dresser all came together and I can't wait to hear what you think. So what do you think of this finish? Close to spray on, almost there. There is a little bit of texture, but like I said, you have to really zoom in to see it. So I'm saying this paint finish is a win. And I can't wait to try different paint velocities, different paint brands, and different rollers to make it even better. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video and found some value. If sure, be sure to like and subscribe. You can also find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, have a fabulous day and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.